I hope you guys took the time to uh, sleep in today, because I am running a little late. So let's jump right into it with National C60 Day, a day to create awareness of the molecule C60, labeled as a free radical sponge with unbelievable antioxidant properties and countless benefits. Yeah, um, that's pretty funky. I didn't know that we had days for stuff like this. Uh, but basically, it was discovered in 1985 um, by scientists Harry Croto, Richard Smalley, and Bob Curl. Uh, and apparently, the real name for it is Buckminster Fullerene. So there you go. Uh, in 1989, Wolfgang Krochmer, uh, Konstantinos Fosteropoulos, Polus, wow, uh, and Donald Huffman produced C60 by creating carbon rod arcs in an inert atmosphere. I'm going to pretend I understood what that meant. Uh, and in 1996, uh, on October 9th, the three scientists that were just named, or actually no, the first three from way before, uh, were given the Nobel Prize for discovering C60. So it only took them 11 years to get their award for it, but there you go. In 2010, a human study finds that when applied topically, C60 is effective at lessening the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Ah, so that must be what the, the people are using in those ads that are always like, doctors hate this person's one trick at nice looking skin. Uh, so yeah, there you go. It's all C60 the whole time. In 2012, the most well-known C60 experiment is conducted with findings showing an increased lifespan of rats by 90%. Whoa. And then in 2016, research scientist Ken Schwartz establishes the C60 Purple Power brand in the U.S., offering 99.99% pure carbon 60 made with 100% certified organic healthy oils. So there you go. Uh, and then, I, oh, it has like some, some recipes and stuff to do. What do we got here? C60 Purple Power Mug of Vitality. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Getting into like some potions and stuff now. Okay, next up, we have World Post Day, which is funny because I definitely need to actually go stick things in the post because I've been getting mail that's not for me, and I need to return to sender. Uh, World Post Day is October 9th, and we're pumped for a throwback to communication methods of the past with some good old-fashioned letters. The thing is, if you sent a letter out today, odds are the person would not <laughs> receive it today. <laughs> um, so there should be like a world post send day and a world post receive day and just anything that you received from this day you then open like probably like in a week from now or something like that i don't know unless you're supposed to have sent it out beforehand to plan for it to get to their house by this date i wonder if you can do that if when you send something via post you can be like make sure it arrives on this day like obviously if it's like too soon and they can't get it there in time that's different but like if you can be like hold on to it for a few days before dropping it off so it arrives on this exact day I imagine you could do that, but I've never done it myself. Um, in 1840, postage stamps were invented. In 550 BC was when the first postal service was ever established, uh, which was, yeah, the first organized postal system originates in ancient Persia on the orders of King Cyrus the Great. In 225 BC, the oldest example of an official post comes from 3rd century BC Egypt. Uh, do, do, do. In 1969 world post day established i totally almost read that as world post day abolished and i was like oh rip this actually died back in 1960s um i guess no more no more of this day uh so let's see how can you oh no we're not going to do participation we're going to do five amazing facts about the postal system uh number one it processes 5,000 letters a second Number two, it receives no help from Uncle Sam. Oh, the USPS receives no tax dollars for operating expenses. So that's in the States, but who knows how it is other places. Uh, three, it has ancient English origins. The word mail comes from a medieval English word referring to a traveler's bag or pack. All right, there you go. Uh, number four, it used to walk like an Egyptian, which is talking about the thing that I already mentioned. Um, and number five, it started zip codes. Oh, there you go. Now I just get ads for this, like three square things so maybe i can get packages delivered to just any meter by meter square or three meter by three meter square in all of canada by using that that'd be interesting and following with that we have curious events day pourquoi 
It's the day to wonder about everything we've ever wondered about. How did they get those clipper ships inside the bottles? Clipper ships? Like the ones that people build inside the bottles? Oh. Who figured out how to tie shoelaces? Oh, I was getting really excited. I was hoping that it was going to be like, what do you call the little thing on the end of a shoelace? Because I was like, ah, yeah, that's an egglet. We got that one from Phineas and Ferb. Uh, what's the most recent sighting of Bigfoot in North America? Mm. Some would say never. <laughs> and others would be more persistent in the search for Bigfoot. History of Curious Events Day. Uh, it's aptly named since it's itself is a curiosity no one knows how it originated or when and certainly not why okay i think that whoever invented this or like wrote this article is just having a bit of fun with it uh curious event days timeline 1869 fake news a farmer in cardiff new york buries a 10-foot stone statue on his land has two guys discover it while digging a well and manages to turn the fake petrified man his cardiff giant into a popular attraction for several months cool 1900 look behind the curtain uh, wonders, blah, 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 wonderful Wizard of Oz about the search for a wizard who turns out to be a charlatan. Ooh. Uh, 1934, the Daily Mail, a London tabloid, publishes a photo of a curious creature with a long neck and one or two humps in Loch Ness. <gasps> oh my goodness. 1947, the crash of an... Uh, I was going to say a UFO, but here it says unidentified... Ob fly wow, I'm messing up my words there. Un unidentified flying object. There we go. Near Roswell, New Mexico, spawned 70 years of speculation about whether the U.S. government could be concealing the fatal arrival of aliens from outer space. <sighs> One of the ways to celebrate it is by debunking a conspiracy theory. Yeah, <laughs> have fun with that. <laughs> Hunt a missing person? <laughs> Jeez. All right. Or get a tattoo of Natalie Wood. The actress we remember from Miracle on 34th Street drowned mysteriously in 1981 recently her case has been reopened and her husband robert wagner now 90 was named a person of interest in her death hmm <laughs> but why why would you get a tattoo of her then that seems a bit um like not the best best idea uh five facts about curious deaths and disappearances that will blow your mind okay i'm just gonna read one of these because i want to get moving on this uh number four theories of cannibalism going native and drowning have competed since 1961 when michael rockefeller son of nelson rockefeller was dumped off a catamaran off the coast of indonesia set out to swim ashore with two jerry cans attached to his belt and was never seen again all right <laughs> there we go whoops uh that was quite the one to read uh i love yarn day celebrated on the second saturday in october which is today uh by yarn enthusiasts and craft lovers all over the world on this day we celebrate all the talented diy yarn crafters crocheters and knitters who create incredible things from yarn from scarves to art to blankets uh let's see so i imagine the thing is just like oh you can make some yarn and that's yeah that's how you can participate learn about yarn make stuff out of yarn five things you can make with yarn in under five minutes ornaments tassels pom-poms gift bows beaded necklaces i don't know how many of these you can make under five minutes if you have no idea what you're doing though like well a beaded necklace would you really have to like i'm trying to think how much of it is actually made of the yarn because like with the pom-poms it's not like the actual pom-pom itself is made of yarn I imagine not anyway. Um, <laughs> so it's just tying a pom-pom to something. Ha 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 ha. Then we got, I, I want to say Leaf Erickson Day, but I'm guessing it's actually Life Erickson Day. Uh, that's how it would be Germanic anyway, but who knows, maybe his name is Leaf. Uh, on October 9th, Nordic communities worldwide will celebrate this day, remembering the explorer credited with bringing the first Nordic people to America around the year 1000. Yeah, we're having like Columbus Day at some point this month too, I think, but this guy this guy actually kind of founded america at least more first than columbus did uh the timeline in the year 999 slash two or slash 1000 uh leaf and his crew of 35 men leave norway for the new world and touch down in north america in october 9th 1825 52 norwegian quakers land on the shores of new york in the first organized migration and congress honors this as the date of leaf erickson day oh there you go wait so why is it oh wait no this wasn't one of the ones that was just like celebrated on a saturday i was like shouldn't this actually be october 9th always then there we go uh and 
five incredible facts about Leif Erikson. <laughs> Often in northern states, including Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Michigan, Norwegian communities come together to put on Leif Erikson festivals, complete with competitive runs, Viking weddings, ooh, and craft sales. They should also throw some uh, Viking funerals in there. Those are always a hot time. Number two, it's not just one day. The Leif Erikson Lodge in Seattle uh, WA holds events and meetings in Leif Erikson's name throughout the year. Land of the Grapes, where Erikson's ship first touched land, what is likely eastern Canada today. Oh, hello. There were so many vines and grapes that he named the land Vineland. Except it's like spelt Vinland, but I've never heard anyone actually say that. I've been to Vineland. Um, and then it goes on for a bit. So we're just going to move on to World Hospice and Palliative Care Day. World Hospice and Palliative Care Day takes place on October 9th with the goal of improving the quality of life for people affected by serious health problems. Do, 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 do. Just going to see what we can find here. 1800s. The first homes and hospitals are used for the purpose of hospice care pioneered by women. 1900, Sisters of Charity develop hospice facilities across the world. 1967, Dr. Sisley Saunders influences the modern concept of hospice care at St. Christopher's Hospice in England. 1990s, hospice becomes an official medical subspeciality, and thousands of hospice agencies operate around the world. And in 2005, the first World Hospice and Palliative Care Day is held along with the Voice of Hospice Global Music event. I'm curious what the first, like, national day was. Like, other than um, cities and countries and whatever uh, celebrating, like, the founding of their place and, like, probably kings and monarchs and what have you's birthdays but like the first just wacky day like oh today's waffle day cool <laughs> when was something like that decided that's what i want to know uh and moving along we have international beer and pizza day so some more jumping back and forth between whether your liver is allowed to work or told to chill out of whether you can drink or not in the month of october because it's now international beer and pizza day so we're back to drinking uh, on October 9th, International Beer and Pizza Day celebrates one of the world's best combinations of food and drink. It's also a day to remember the good things in life. <laughs> the good things in life as in other things in beer and pizza, because, yeah, those can be pretty good. What are some of your favorite food and drink combinations? Oh, wait, this this article is just asking questions. This isn't telling me anything. Hmm, what can I find? Is this? Wait a second. As you eat your pizza and drink your beer, you may want to watch one of these movies that have great pizza scenes. We got Iron Man, Home Alone 2, Do the Right Thing, Back to the Future 2, Dude, Where's My Car, and Wayne's World. Uh, there's also an amazing pizza scene in, uh, I want to say it's Spider-Man 2. I think it's the second one. Pizza time. Right, let's move along to Pan slash Pandas Awareness Day. I don't know if that's supposed to actually be P-A-N-S slash P-A-N-D-A-S Awareness Day. Uh, but in the United States, nearly 1 in 200 children are diagnosed with PANS, which is Pediatric Acute Onset Neurophys... Neuropsychiatric Syndromes. There we go. And Pediatric Autoimmune Neuro... How did I just get s stuck on the same word again? Neuropsychiatric Disorders Associated with Strep... To co coal infections. Oh boy, <laughs> too many big words for me. Uh, this day sets out to increase research, education, and support to those affected by the condition. S uh, the symptoms include. Wait, what? It says the symptoms include. Oh, ticks. Like. Okay. I thought it meant like ticks, like the bug, and I was like, that wouldn't be a symptom. That would be like what can cause this, I guess. No, but sorry. Symptoms include ticks, sudden onset obsessive compulsive disorder, deterioration in skills. Uh, beginning to refuse food and becoming selective in foods they will eat, anxiety, depression, reduced performance at school, sensitive to touch and sound, sleep changes, hyperactivity, uncontrolled movements, and rheumatic pain. I don't know why I read it like that, but I think it's because it's a word that started with R-H-E-U, and I was like, ooh, that's quite the word there. <laughs> um, we also have one that this is going to be an interesting take for sure, but I'm just here to say what days it is so i'm not going to be given any opinions here but it is national pro-life cupcake day uh on this day cupcakes are baked to honor the lives of those not yet born the day also raises awareness about the issue of abortion okay uh cupcakes are a sweet way to get a conversation started on a difficult subject Ooh. <laughs> oh no this is <laughs> oh Hey, I heard you were thinking about getting an abortion. Here's a cupcake. Maybe don't do that. What? Who would who would do that? Who would start a conversation like that? Jeez. Okay. You know what? Okay, we're gonna get a little bit personal here. I'm I'm curious if this means that there's also like a national pro-choice cupcake day because it feels weird that there'd be one-sided. Like, do the national days now take uh, up political stances? 
I guess there probably are like days for certain political parties and stuff. Like we've had things about, um, oh, what was that one? Something about China. Um, what was it? Nationalist Day? Chinese Nationalist Day? Something like that a few days ago. And like, I don't know. It's just, this is just really weird. Now, now I've, I'm pretty sure I've said enough and hinted enough <laughs> at how hot of a take this is. Um, make a cupcake and use hashtag pro life cupcake day to post a social media. Okay, yeah, this is this is gonna this is just gonna start a lot of drama. All right, <laughs> we're just gonna move along from that one uh, to oh no, that's National Leaf Erickson Day again. Oh, here we go, National Moldy Cheese Day. Ah, yes, there's nothing controversial with this one. It's a unique holiday that is observed each year on October 9th. A cheesemonger is a person who specializes in cheeses, butter, and other dairy products. They make take. They may take umbrage at the ordinary person's offense of moldy cheese. Well, depending on the type of mold, of course, some cheese molds, red or brown tinged molds, are offensive. <gasps> Toss those bacteria contaminated moldy cheeses in the garbage and move along to the gray, blue, or green colored moldy cheeses in the fridge instead. That's so, it's so weird that like moldy cheese is like a thing that people eat. I'm pretty sure I've had it as like a dip before. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I remember not being like. Ter terribly upset after eating it like i was like okay <laughs> there we go um and finally it's national costume swap day which is for the second i was about to say the second september in october the second saturday in october um it encourages the pirates princesses dragons and wizards to trade costumes this is actually kind of cool i've never seen this done before in my schools in like back when i was a child never did anything like this but i think that would be really cool to do having everyone bring their costume and then swap them out uh, i think you could have a lot of fun with that all right, moving on to some celebrity birthdays. We have Bella Hadid, 25, American model and was voted model of the year by models.com in 2016. Landon Barker, 18, who is Travis Barker's son. Kate, Travis is an American musician who's, he's, well, he's covered in tattoos. Uh, that's all I got. I don't, I don't know what makes Landon Barker so special if he's just someone f famous as his son. Like... Moving on to someone that I actually know, John Lennon. There we go. 1940 to 1980, a member of the Beatles. And he's got too many songs to list, but the ones Google gave here are uh, Imagine, Hey Jude, and Let It Be. Uh, also, if you want a fun Beatles cover, look up Mrs. Miller's cover of It's a Hard Day's Night. Uh, you won't regret it. Jada Gomillion, or something, Gomillion. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce names. <laughs> Uh, 19 <laughs> TikTok star and according to this site's trivia one of the most popular videos featuring her or features her dancing with her brother that that's all that's all man not too much detail on some of these people here okay uh Jacob Batalon 25 uh he is Ned from Spider-Man movies like the newer ones he's also in the movie Every Day, Let It Snow, a few others. We got Sharon Osbourne, 69, British television personality, married to Ozzy Osbourne. Nice. Uh, she was in the movies It's a Boy-Girl Thing and a bunch of Ozzy-related movies and shows. Uh, oh, sorry. I meant to just say movie. Oh, no. Yeah, there is an Osbourne show here. Okay, cool. Uh, and then other shows like Lucifer, The Talk, and The X Factor. Uh, then we have Steve Burns, 48. He's from Blue's Clues and made a video recently talking about the fact that he's still are all of our best friends and he had disappeared because he went to school and I think he's returning for like the 25th anniversary of Blue's Clues if I'm getting that right. Uh, and finally we have Brandon Routh, 42. He was Superman way back when and played Daniel Shaw in the show Chuck. That's where, where I remember him. Uh, and he's apparently in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. There we go. Okay, on to some random Wikipedia stuff. 1900, the Cook Islands become a territory of the United Kingdom. In 1986, the Phantom of the Opera, eventually the second longest running musical in London, opens at Her Majesty's Theatre. In 2009, first lunar impact of NASA's lunar precur precursor. There we go. I was about to say persecutor. I was like, oh my gosh. No, the lunar, the lunar persecutor. Jeez. Uh, no, the lunar precursor robotic program. And 1845, for our random birth, we got Carl Gustav Thulin, a Swedish ship owner who passed away in 1918. And his random thing from Wikipedia that I've grabbed up is that he co-owned and later became the sole owner of the shipping, the shipping, the shipping company Nordstrom and Thulin. Ooh, he was the son of Andre Thulin, Och Charlotte Thulin. Oh, boy. In 1861, he was employed at the age of 16 by shipbroker Carl David Nordstrom. Actually, it's probably like Nordstrom. Yeah. 
That's a cool name. I like that. At a firm that since 1850 had worked with cargoing ships in Stockholm. Apparently cargoing isn't a word, according to... <laughs> well, according to word. And ships in Stockholm. In 1866, Thulin became co-owner of the company that was called Nordstrom and Thulin, the same year the company bought its first own ship. Cool. And there we go. Uh, sorry that this one's a bit late. Um, hopefully, because it's Saturday, everyone slept in. But if not, and people were waiting for this, then I apologize. So stay safe, stay moldy, and you'll be hearing back from me tomorrow. <laughs>